Good morning, everyone. Here we are at our church service for Ezra Church of God. Uh, we want to start off here with some prayer requests that we received this morning. And uh, these will be uh, mainly for us who are members of the church. You'll know who we're talking about. The rest of you, we ask for prayer uh, for them, too. Of course, first of all, we want to pray for our nation. And uh, I also want to pray for Tammy, a member of our congregation, who has uh, tooth pain and uh, has uh, skin cancer on her face that needs to be removed. And also her son, Brian, uh, who is uh, scheduled to make a trip home uh, here in a little while. We pray that he will be able to make that trip. And then we also want to pray for uh, Larry Cullum, who is Shelley's father-in-law and uh, who had a stroke and uh, needs surgery on carotid artery or has already had that. Uh, he's, in uh, he's in Carbondale Hospital. So let's remember these and any others that you have. And let's just take a moment to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your blessings to us and lord we thank you that in it all you are there we thank you there that you are there during good times and you are there during hard times uh, lord i pray that uh, with the difficulties that are uh, uh, overtaking our nation right now and even the world uh, that these would be wake-up calls to us not that not that everyone has done anything in particular wrong, although we realize that we have all sinned and have come short of you. So, Lord, I pray that you would just use all of this for your glory. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, these requests that we just read here. And we know that you can do amazing things, miraculous things. And we thank you for when you choose to do that. Lord, sometimes you choose to heal by natural means, and we thank you for that. And then, Lord, for reasons that we don't know, sometimes you tell us to wait, or sometimes it's not a time for that. Uh, I pray that uh, you'd be with us during this service, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, in preparation for this uh, church service, I went on Facebook and I saw a picture there that was taken five years ago of uh, Randy Bird as a picture of him and me. Rhonda uh, persuaded him to let me have a picture made with him. And he is a mutual friend of ours. He is the bass singer for the Mark Trammell Quartet. Uh, we met him in connection with uh, a mutual friend, uh, Larry and Ginger Savasia, and their son, Steve, and actually their whole family. Uh, but one day, uh, uh, Randy was passing through, and uh, at that time, Larry and G Ginger Savasia lived just right next door to us. And their son, Steve Savasia, who is a missionary in Australia, happened to be in the area. So he uh, uh, came by to talk to Steve for a little while, and that's how I got to meet him. And uh, But anyway, he's the bass singer for the Mark Trammell Quartet. And they would have been here last night, if it, and not here, in Thompsonville, but in Marion, Illinois, at the Marion Civic Center uh, for the Truth Seekers Homecoming but the coronavirus uh, prevented him from being able to do that. Well, I see uh, over to the left here that uh, some are commenting. And uh, so uh, can you comment back and tell me if you can hear me and see me <laughs> right now? Is the video working okay? So as I was thinking about uh, Randy Bird and 
the fact that he was not able to be here last night it reminds us that there are many people whose livelihood depends on going to areas where there are large groups of people. And there are even people who, uh, whose livelihood depends on being in restaurants. And uh, we thank God for that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I see that it sounds good. I hope you're either seeing or hearing this. Uh, and uh, so in uh, Numbers chapter 20, uh, we realize that there was also a person who was leading people and was traveling. <laughs> so today I want to talk, though, about diligence in hard times. So I do pray for those whose incomes are being cut during this time and uh, for, for the lives that are being changed. It's a little difficult for us to not be able to uh, share our friendships and, our, and experience fellowship in the way that we're used to doing. Uh, I pray for those that are, may be even more homebound than some of the rest of us who are able to get out at least a little bit. And... Uh, so we're doing that. But this is a hard time. It's a hard time in our nation. And it's a hard time all across the world as we are thinking about this. Now, in the context of this passage of Scripture, uh, you had a couple of deaths. You had some complaints. You had a denial of passage through a certain country. And you had some failures on the part of the leaders. I think there are some things that we can gain from this in regard to our present situation as we look at it today. So in Numbers chapter 20 and verse 1, we read about the death of Miriam. So Moses' sister died. He said, Then the children of Israel, the whole assembly, came to the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people dwelt in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. So Moses was dealing on a personal level with the loss of his sister. This is the sister that... Uh, rescued him whenever he was placed in the basket and uh, she uh, watched over him when he was in the river and then whenever Pharaoh's daughter came and found him and then she came out of hiding and, and arranged for Moses to be raised by his own mother and so this was the sister that had done that uh, we read another time whenever uh, uh, Miriam and complained about something that Moses did. But you know that Moses, uh, I'm sure, experienced grief and loss during this time. Well, we realize that there are those who are experiencing grief and loss uh, here in the coronavirus situation, that there are many who have died. I'm thankful that uh, that it's probably not as many as would have been otherwise because of some of the precautions that have been taken. Well, the second thing we read here is that there was no water. Verse 2, there was no water for the assembly, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. The people argued with Moses and spoke, saying, Oh, that we had died. Uh, I lost my place there. <laughs> when our brothers died before the Lord. And why have you brought up the assembly of the land into this wilderness, that we and our livestock should die here? And why have you brought us up from Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. This is a group of people that were in slavery in Egypt, 
and had been brought out of slavery and had seen uh, great miracles take place. They had actually seen the waters of the Red Sea part and they went through on dry land. Uh, many of them still remembered that. And here they are complaining against Moses. Well, I guess we do the same thing, don't we? <laughs> I think the first thing is we need to be careful about complaining. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the things, sometimes <laughs> I laugh about this, that uh, sometimes I will uh, kind of vent a little bit to my wife <laughs> or sometimes I've at least expressed my aches and my pains and things like that. And it's good to just have somebody to listen and uh, have a little empathy with you. But and those are not real complaints, though. These were real complaints. And we need to be careful about what we're complaining about, uh, especially if we start blaming people who could not help it at all who caused nothing to happen. Well, Moses and Aaron are here and the people are complaining and they're saying, why did you bring us into this evil place? And uh, did you bring us here to die? And so Moses and Aaron did what we all should do. They went to God. So in verse six, we read that Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tent of meeting, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron your brother, and speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will give its water, and you will bring out to them water from the rock. So you will give the assembly and their livestock drink. So they went to God and God gave them an answer. He gave them a plan of action and he was going to do actually an amazing thing whenever he was going to bring water from the rock. Well, so we should go to God whatever we're facing, whatever frustrations we have, whatever hurts we have, we should go to God. And we probably um, should go to God more than what we do. Even as serious as this situation is, I'm not sure how much more my prayer life has increased. And so I'm experiencing a little conviction even talking about this but we should go to God. What the second thing or the third thing here is after being careful about complaining and going to God is that we should pray for our leaders. So Moses and Aaron went to God. God gave them uh, a plan of action, something to do. He gave them actually a wonderful promise that it was going to take care of the situation. Now, as much as uh, we think of Moses being a great man of God, we realize that he is also human and that he had failures too. And we're going to see a failure uh, as they came to try to bring about what God commanded them to do. So in verse nine, we read this. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock. And here's where his failure begins. They were complaining and complaining and uh, they were blaming him. They were blaming Aaron. And the, that just weighed heavily upon Moses. The Bible tells us that Moses was the meekest man on the earth. And that is true. But that word meekness does not mean weak, weakness. It was not the weakest man on the earth. Actually, the word meek means strength under control or anger under control. 
And so Moses had been able to do that many, many times. Well, we need to pray for our leaders. Our, our leaders are under a tremendous amount of pressure during this time. And speaking of complaints, there may be some <laughs> that they are hearing too. But in this case, Moses's anger got out of control. And he said, Hear now, you rebels, will we bring out water from this rock for you? Well, he knew that God was going to do it, but listen to how he said it. Will we bring water out from this rock for you? And Moses lifted up his hand and he struck the rock twice with his rod and plenty of water came out and the assembly drank and their livestock. God was faithful to keep his promise, even though Moses did not do this correctly. And his anger got out of control. It almost made it sound like that he and Aaron were taking a little bit of credit for the fact that they're going to deliver this water. Now they knew that that was not the case, but those were the words that they said. But instead they could have glorified God and sanctified God for what he was going to do here. He was going to provide the answer to the situation. Well, then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in me to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you will not bring this assembly into the uh, land which I have given them. Well, all of the original group were actually going to die off before they went in. But Moses and Aaron had had the hope that they would be able to go into the promised land. Uh, for all the years of uh, leading the people and all the pressures and all the things that God had done, they at least had the hope that they would be able to go into the promised land. Well, that was not going to be the case because you had a failure of the leaders. Our leaders are trying to do the best they can. There may be some disagreements. Uh, we must pray for wisdom for our leaders and for uh, what they want to do to try to correct the situation. Well, uh, during hard times, Another thing we can do besides being careful about complaining and going to God and play, praying for our leaders is for us ourselves to accept discipline whenever it might be necessary. There may be things in our own lives that I'm not saying are a direct correlation to what's happening in our nation, but there are things in our own lives that may be unpleasing to God, and he may have to discipline us. Us older folks know what it means to be taken to the woodshed, although that might have just been a metaphorical term because I didn't have to be taken somewhere else. <laughs> I could be taken to what was going to happen at the woodshed in that uh, respect, and that's where you would get a spanking for whenever you disobeyed your parents. Uh, accept discipline when necessary. And allow these hard times to cause self-examination. There are things that we bring upon ourselves. I'm not talking about the coronavirus now. I'm just talking more generally. But a time like this would call for self-examination. There are other things that are consequences of our disobedience to God. So we need to repent when God convicts. We need to take God's commands seriously. Now, in the rest of this chapter here, they wanted to go through the land of Edom, and Edom did not allow them to go through. Now, this is, uh, 
this is entirely different than what is taking place in our day, but we are restricting travel. And so their travel was restricted then. And it's probably a good thing in our day uh, to restrict some travel from some places. Again, we need to pray for our leaders and the decisions they make. Uh, we need to be obedient to proper authority and uh, to try to discern that and uh, to do that in this case. Our leaders are given to us when we are to pray for them that we may lead a uh, tranquil and peaceful life. And so it's God's will that we pray for our leaders. And whenever it works right, <laughs> uh, they are a terror to those who are evil, not to those who are good. Some leaders uh, do not act in their proper relationship. We understand that. And yet we need to pray for them in those respects too. But for those who really care and really want the best for us, then we just need to hold them up in prayer. Well, the last part of the chapter, down in verse 22, we read this. They journeyed from Kadesh, and the children of Israel, even the whole assembly, came to Mount Hor. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor, by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron will be gathered to his people, because he will not enter into the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against me at the water of Meribah. That is just what we read about it in the beginning of the chapter. Take Aaron and Eliezer his son, and bring them up to Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eliezer his son, and Aaron will be gathered to his people, and he will die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up on the Mount Hor in the sight of all the assembly. Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eliezer his son. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. And Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. When all the assembly saw that Aaron was dead, they wept for Aaron thirty days, all the house of Israel. So it was not a direct result, either in Miriam's case or in Aaron's case, of them not having any water. But you did have those two deaths that were recorded in this passage of Scripture. So being diligent during the hard times, we need to be careful about complaining. We need to go to God. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to accept discipline when it's necessary. We need to take God's commands seriously. But most of all, we should be prepared for death whenever it comes. Hopefully none of us who are uh, listening to this message today will experience death because of the coronavirus. But if that were the case, would you be ready? It doesn't have to be a virus. <laughs> it could be a car wreck. It could be an accident. It could be something that could happen at work. Uh, it could be all numbers of things. It could, yes, be an illness. It could be an illness that leads to death. We don't know when the day will come. We need to be prepared whenever it does come. And the good news of the gospel is that we can be prepared. Though we have sinned and our sin causes us to be separated from God, God has a magnificent and wonderful love for each one of us. And he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, the wages of sin is death, and Jesus died. Whenever Jesus died, his death was sufficient 
to pay the penalty for our sins by believing and trusting in him. And I believe it's a very strong belief. I believe that it's a belief that is so strong, it also changes our conduct. It will cause us to quit living for ourselves and to start living according to God's word. I pray that if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that this would be the day you could do it. You would do it. And you could do that even in these moments. Uh, we, I'm going to pray here in just a moment. And in the first part of the prayer, I'm going to pray in a, in a way that would be a suggestion for how you might pray. And then I will just close with praying for all of us. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your love for us. Lord, I pray that if there's someone that's listening to this message that would like to take the biblical steps of preparing for their own mortality, for their own time, whenever they would slip into eternity. And Lord, based on your word, we realize that we can pray something like this. And perhaps if you're hearing this prayer, you may want to pray these words after me. Now, just mindless repetition will not do any good, but a sincere desire of the heart will be your own prayer. If you desire to be saved, I would ask that you would pray something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing my prayer. I realize that I have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. I realize that sin is terrible and that I deserve death because of that sin. I also have heard the gospel that Jesus died for me. And Heavenly Father, I believe that is true, that he died for me. I've heard that you caused him to rise from the dead, and I believe that too. And having believed that, I trust Jesus to save me and give me salvation. I believe your word, and I thank you for doing that in my heart. Now I'll continue the prayer in just a moment, but if you prayed that prayer and you sincerely meant it in your heart on the authority of God's word, you are coming into a relationship with the Lord. I encourage you to go to a church and make that known. Talk with a pastor, talk with a Christian friend, tell someone about the decision and the step you've made today. If you don't have a church home, we would invite you to Ezra Church of God in Pershing, Illinois. And uh, next week at the same, or a couple of weeks, whenever we decide to start back there in that location again, we'd invite you. Let's continue our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you now, all of us, in a difficult time, a hard time. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would... Uh, Help us to be careful about complaining and help us to not be the kind of complainers that uh, are displeasing to you and bring reproach upon your name. Lord, I pray that you would help us to realize that we can come to you with all of our needs and that we would do that. Now, Lord, we pray for the leaders of our communities, of our states, of our nation, of the countries of the world and lord that you would give them wisdom and uh, help them to make proper decisions lord i pray that you would accept help us to accept any discipline that you may bring in our own lives and that we would take your commands seriously and lord we thank you that having put our faith and trust in you we can claim the gift of eternal life and know that we are prepared 
for death. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm glad you have come to church today <laughs> and joined us live. Now, uh, it may be that uh, next week we may have to do this again. I say that because they are talking about the schools opening up again, either on April 7th or 8th. And so it may be that uh, the restrictions would still be recommended next week, although I guess the uh, uh, it's more than just a recommendation right now as far as people uh, staying home uh, by the directives of the governor and of the state. But anyway, if we do this again next week, maybe we will have some music <laughs> at the beginning. We'll see. Thank you again for coming, and I pray that you have a great day and a great week.